Food poisoning, also known as foodborne illness, is typically caused by the ingestion of food contaminated with harmful microorganisms or their toxins. Even if foodborne diseases are preventable, each year worldwide, unsafe food causes 600 million cases of foodborne disease and half a million deaths. 30% of foodborne deaths occur among children under 5 years of age. WHO estimates that 33 million years of healthy lives are lost due to eating unsafe food globally each year, and this number is likely underestimated. Food poisoning is caused by bacteria, virus, or toxins in the food we eat. Viruses are the most frequent cause of food poisoning, followed by bacteria. The most common viruses and bacteria that cause food poisoning are norovirus, Salmonella, Clostridium, Campylobacter, and Staphylococcus. From parasites, Giardia, Amoeba, and Tinea species are the most common. In addition, there are many toxins that can cause food poisoning. Some are produced by bacteria or, or in a food, and others are produced by plants and animals or fish or other organisms that are ingested. Foods most commonly associated with food poisoning include eggs, dairy products, meats, poultry, cheese, raw fruits and vegetables, usually unwashed ones, and nuts and spices. These pathogens can cause a variety of symptoms depending on the type of organism and the amount of contamination. Some pathogens, such as Staphylococcus, produce toxins that can cause rapid onset illness, while others, like Salmonella, may result in a slower onset of symptoms. Once ingested, these pathogens or their toxins enter the digestive tract, where they can cause inflammation of the stomach and the intestine. In severe cases, the infection may spread beyond the GI, leading to more systemic symptoms, such as septicemia. The clinical presentation of food poisoning can vary depending on the causative organisms. But the most common symptoms include nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramp, diarrhea, which can be watery or bloody, and fever. Symptoms typically begin within hours to days after consumption of contaminated food with a severity depending on the pathogen involved. For example, in case of Salmonella or Campylobacter infection, patients may present with fever chills and abdominal cramp in addition to diarrhea. E. coli, particular disease caused by shiga toxin producing strain may lead to bloody diarrhea and in severe cases they may cause hemolytic uremic syndrome which can cause acute kidney failure. In contrast, norovirus typically causes a sudden onset of vomiting and diarrhea often in cluster of people such as outbreak in school. In the majority of individuals with mild to moderate symptoms of food poisoning, symptoms resolve in about 24 to 48 hours. However, if there are any signs of dehydration, such as decreased or no urination, dry mouth, increased thirsty, dizziness and weakness, bleed in the stool, fever, vomiting, or diarrhea that lasts more than three days, medical care should be sold. Diagnosis of food poisoning is primarily clinical based on patient's history of exposure and the presenting symptoms. The physical exam will focus on signs of dehydration and abdominal tenderness. Stool samples might be useful to detect blood in the stool, culture for pathogen and microscopical exam for parasites. Blood tests, if necessary, might be used to help complications or rule out other problems. In addition, there are immunological tests for some toxins, such as Shiga toxin. Definitive diagnosis depends on the identification of the pathogen or toxic material found in the individual. When we came to treatment, the majority of food poisoning cases are self-limiting and they can be managed with supportive care. The primary treatment goal is to prevent dehydration and alleviate symptoms. Oral rehydration solutions, which contain electrolytes and glucose, are essential to replace fluids lost through vomiting and the diarrhea. In severe cases of dehydration or when oral rehydration is not possible, intravenous fluids might be necessary. 
Antibiotic treatment is generally not recommended for most cases of food poison. For example, for bacterial infection like Campylobacter and Salmonella, supportive care remains the cornerstone of treatment. However, antibiotic may be indicated in case of certain bacterial infections such as Shigella or Salmonella, especially in immunocompromised individual or in case of invasive infection, if there is feature of systemic disease. For Clostridium dembotulinum, antitoxin administration is critical. Food poisoning can't always be prevented. However, these four steps will help reduce your risk of getting sick. Clean, separate, cook and chill. Wash your hands and work surface before touching any food. Wash your hands while you are preparing food. Clean your hands and work surface after food has been prepared. Keep raw meat, seafood and eggs away from ready to eat foods. Use separate cutting boards and the keep raw meat away from other foods while shopping and in the refrigerator. Use a food thermometer to make sure foods are cooked to a safe tem temperature. See your refrigerator to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees Celsius. In summary, food poisoning remains a significant health concern globally with a range of causative pathogens and varying clinical presentation. Timely diagnosis and appropriate management including rehydration and supportive care are essential in treating most cases. Prevention through proper food handling and hygiene practice is the key to reducing the incidence of foodborne illness. Thank you for watching.